One of the really cool advantages to Active Directory today is that you have the ability to create multiple password policies per domain. Now, when Windows Server 2008 was released, fine-grained password policies were also included. And that has moved forward with 2012 and also 2016. Before 2008, you could only have one password policy per domain, which meant that sales had to have the exact same password policy as IT, which had to have the same exact policy as executives, and so forth. But with the release of 2008 and the release of fine-grained password policies, you could set up different policies for different groups or even individual users. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how simple it is to actually create a second password policy that's going to apply to a group. So we're going to go ahead. We have our domain policy already set up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set up a fine-grained password policy, which, by the way, is called a PSO, Password Setting Object. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set up an individual PSO just for sales. So to do this, it's as simple as going into the Active Directory Administrative Center. Now, once you get into the Active Directory Administrative Center, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on the domain and you're going to want to go down to System. Now, once you click on System, you're going to want to go down to where it says Password Settings Container, which is this folder right here. So I'm just going to double click on that. And what will happen is that will bring me into the Password Settings Container. And you'll see right here on the left hand side, it's now showing that we're in System Password Settings Container. Now, all I need to do is click on New over here on the right-hand side, and I'm going to say Password Settings. And I'll make it a little larger to make it easier. And then all you have to do is fill in the different fields that you want for this password, this fine-grained password settings for sales. So for the name of it, it's going to be Sales. And on my precedence, I'm going to put 20. Now, what the precedence is, is it's a cost value. And what you can do is you can have different cost values set up for different users and groups. For example, a lot of times you have people like executives that like to be part of multiple groups. And then one of the groups that they might want to belong to is sales. If I go in and set up a password policy for executives, and I set the precedence of their password policy to 10, and then I create a password policy for sales, and I set that one to 20, if you have a user who belongs to both the executives group and the sales group, the password policy with the lowest precedence will take effect. So for example, in this scenario, executives, it would be their password policy that overrides the sales password policy. So what you need to do is when setting up your different precedences for your different groups, you're going to want to sit down and kind of organize your groups based on value. Which groups have a higher value? For example, IT may have, a, may have the highest value. Maybe you set IT to 10, executives to 20, sales to 30. And the reason being is because normally IT people, you want your IT group to have a password policy that fits IT. The problem we run into is you can have multiple users belonging to multiple groups. So you definitely want to make sure you set up your precedence values so that the password policy that you want to apply to certain people do actually apply to those people. So here where it says the minimum password length, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set our minimum length up to be 10. On the password history, we're going to go ahead and keep that 24. What that does is that means that a user cannot reuse their password until the 25th password. 
So they're going to have to use 24 passwords before they can go back to one that they've previously used. Password must meet complexity. We're going to turn that on. Complexity means you have to have uppercase, lowercase, number, or special characters. For password complexity, you have to meet three of those four. Uppercase, lowercase, number, special character. If you turn this on like it is, then every password has to have at least three of those four requirements. Storing password using reverse encryption is something that you never want to set unless you have a reason for it. Believe it or not, by choosing that, you're making your passwords less secure. So Microsoft even states, don't choose that unless you have a very good reason why you want your passwords stored in reverse encryption. On the right hand side, we're going to have a minimum password age of one day. The reason that I set a minimum password age is because again, the history. If their history is 24, then what they can do is if I don't have a minimum password age, they can literally just change their password 25 times in the next hour and get back to an original password. By having a minimum password age of one day, it's going to take them at least 25 days to get back to a password that they want. So it stops your users from just constantly changing their passwords to get back to a password that they like and they want to continue to use. Setting up a minimum password age. I want my salespeople to change their password at least once every 25 days. They go on the road, possibility that they might have, you know, passwords that get stolen while they're on the road. So I'm going to make their number a little bit less. I'm also going to set up the lockout policy. If the user puts in five bad attempts within 30 minutes, I'm going to lock their account out until an administrator manually unlocks the account. Now, people always ask me, why do I choose the setting where an administrator has to unlock the account? Why not set a lockout duration, for example, 30 minutes or 60 minutes, and then just let the account re-enable after that time period. Here's the problem with that. Right now, we have five bad passwords within 30 minutes, which means if they put in five bad attempts within a 30 minute time period, they get locked out. If I go in and I set it so that every 30 minutes the account unlocks, what may end up happening is you can have a user that ends up leaving on Friday and a hacker can start hacking into their account. They put in five bad passwords. They get locked out. 30 minutes later, the account gets locked out. Uh, I'm sorry, the account gets re-enabled. Uh, re they put in five bad password attempts. They're locked out for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, they put in five bad password attempts. They get locked out for 30 minutes. They can continue to do this every 30 minutes all the way until Monday morning. Let's say our users come back in at 7 o'clock. Your hacker could stop at 6 a.m. and not put in any more bad password attempts. Your user comes in. They put in their username. They put in the proper password. They get right in. You may never know that someone was even trying to hack into their account. Now, yes, every time a bad password is put in, it gets logged into the event viewer. But it's very rare on Monday that we have enough time, because Mondays are one of our craziest days, that we have enough time to just come in and start looking at the event viewer to see, you know, did anybody try to get hacked over the weekend? By locking the account out after the first five bas uh, after the first five bad passwords, what this ends up doing is your hacker puts in five bad passwords, they get locked out. That's it. They can't do anything else. Your user comes in on Monday, puts in their normal username, puts in their normal password. The account's locked out. They call you and you say, hey, wait a minute, how many times did you try this? Oh, this is the very first time I put in my username and password told me I was locked out immediately. Now it gives me an idea that someone might be trying to hack into this account. It, it gives me a chance to watch the account, go back into the event log. So by setting it so that the administrator has to unlock the account, I'm guaranteeing that somebody in the IT department is going to know that this account got locked out at least once over the weekend. So under my description, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that this is the sales 
password settings. Real easy. This way everybody knows what it is. Now, here where it says applies to, directly applies to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just choose the sales department. So I'm going to hit add and I'm going to say sales. Check name, comes up, and that's it. Now, this password policy is going to apply to sales, and it was quick and easy. The nice thing about this is I went through and explained the different fields, but if you were just going to go in and set this up, you could set this up within minutes. And the great thing about it is you can have different password policies that apply to different users, groups, or you can have your domain-based policy. Now, if you have a domain-based policy, and you have a policy, for example, for sales, the sales policy is going to override the domain default policy. That's the great thing about the fine-grained password policies. It gives you the ability, okay, this gives you the ability to make sure that when you set up these fine-grained password policies, these are going to be the ones that take effect. And if you don't have a password policy set up for a specific user or group, then the domain policies will automatically apply. So, again, one of the nicest advantages to moving into Active Directory, starting with 2008, 2012, and then 2016, is you have the ability to put multiple password policies on individual users and individual groups, besides having your normal domain policy. Go ahead, give it a try. It's a very quick, very easy way to set up passwords for each individual group or user.